Okay, the first thing I want to show you is the curriculum that, that I'm using from Live Education. This is for first grade. I go ahead and print off labels for the entire curriculum and I color code them so that it's easy for me to find the books that I need. I also put that it's first grade because there aren't, it doesn't say first grade on any of the other books. All right, so for first grade, you get eight books. And the first one is an introduction to the first year. And sometimes you might overlook going through the introduction, but I highly advise you to read through this because it gives you so many ideas and tips on how to use the curriculum and how to form your day because the the way that the Waldorf curriculum uses main lesson blocks is really different than other curricula. And so it goes through explaining how to do a main lesson block and what activities you're doing daily while you're doing your main lesson throughout the year, which changes. It's a different subject area for each main lesson. So here are the subjects that you're going to have. The first one and this is not in any particular order, but you do want to do the form drawing before you do the introduction to the letters and the numbers. But this one is beginning form drawing. And this is the the skills that a child needs to learn before embarking on printed letters and writing numbers. And so the first lesson is really basic. It's just a straight line and a curved line. And once you master straight and curved, you can draw anything because everything is a combination of straight and curved lines. And so there's all these different exercises that go through practicing doing straight and curved lines and though they look simple this is this is this can be a little bit challenging for a child to be able to space these out to make the second line a little bit shorter than the first line and so on and so forth and that kind of symmetry that's um, a, a skill that the child is going to continue to learn and perfect because a lot of the main lesson books don't have any lines in them and the child is going to have to write, here's some examples of the form drawing actually, but they don't have any lines. And so when you get ready to do the writing, you need to be able to orient the words and the letters within this page. And this is not just by accident. There's actually a reason behind that. And the reason is that it's important for a child to be able to do that so that he himself can learn how to orient himself within a community or society. So that has like deeper implications. So this is, this is a typical main lesson book for first grade. It's quite large. And I think the dimensions are 22 by 17. You do want to make it large because they are still working on their gross motor skills at that age and this makes it a lot easier for them. I also picked up a supplementary uh, like curriculum for form drawing, but it goes through uh, the similar things in the beginning with the straight lines and the curved lines. And then it gets more intricate. These designs would be more suitable for an older child or somebody who's already worked through the basic form drawing because these ones though they get a little bit complicated towards the end they start out really really simple okay the world of numbers the way that waldorf approaches math is really different that you know in my opinion versus other curriculum that i've seen and it starts with just the number one and the way that it's taught is also with a shape. So in a circle, you only have one, um, like you just one line, I guess. It's a circle, one, one form. And here you have two. And then once you get into the other shapes, then you're counting the angles. There's also a story for each number. The, num the introduction of math is always through the world of story and something that can draw the child in. And so there's going to be examples f of stories that you could use for each of the numbers, which is really great. The next book is Beginning Recorder Drama and Poetry. And one of the supplies that I recommend you getting is a recorder and this one is really beautiful now I admit that over the years we haven't done 
music in our homeschool the way I had intended to do it, but this is a really beautiful recorder. You could use a really simple one, of course, that goes along with this curriculum. And it's really simple, so even if you didn't know how to, yourself as a parent, read music or play the recorder, it's super simple so that you could learn how to do it so that you could also teach your child. And then it'll come with different songs that you could that you could teach your child and that, that your child could learn because they're simple enough. Okay, the next book is The Art of the Fairy Tale. And so even in first grade and actually throughout the entire curriculum in elementary school, there's a lot about story. It's story driven. And the fairy tales play a big part in grade one because they're used in order to introduce the letters of the alphabet. Now, th this curriculum comes with the fairy tales for first grade, but if you wanted to, you could always pick up your own complete Grimm's fairy tales, and then you could choose different stories if you wanted to. I just advise that you read the fairy tales before you read them to your child, because some of them can be a little bit horrific and and graphic, and so you just want to pre-read those before you share them with your child. All right, the next book is Lessons in the Arts for element the Elementary School Years. And this is going to go over some different techniques that you use for watercoloring and for using crayons. And this is not just for, for first grade. This can go into third, fourth, and maybe even fifth grade before they transition from crayons to color pencils. So I want to show you the crayons and the watercolors that are typically used in first grade. So the first set are the block crayons. And this set comes with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16 colors. But typically in first grade, you're only going to be using the primary colors and maybe the secondary colors. And that's how you begin. That way you can start to form your own colors your own secondary and tertiary colors on your own by mixing these colors together. These are beeswax crayons. They they layer really beautifully. You just don't want to be really heavy handed when you're layering the first time. Otherwise, the second layer of color won't be able to produce that tertiary or secondary color. So this is great for kindergarten and first grade and second grade. And what and as the child moves through the grades, then you introduce more of the colors. It's not that you're introducing them because they've already figured that out by blending the colors, but then you can give them some of the other crayons. And after they've used the block crayons, they can use the stick crayons. These are especially helpful when you're drawing like the larger letters. And again, you'll just start with a couple of colors first and then build those different colors in as the years go by. And the watercolors are from the same brand, Stockmar. And again, in the first years, you would just start with the three different colors and then you could blend them. These are still mo mostly primary colors. You don't have your greens and your orange, although this is a little bit like an orange, and your purple. But then you can, you can go and do the entire rainbow, including uh, brown. And one thing that I found really useful in working with the watercolors is getting a little jar set like this. These have the screw on lids. You can mix your color. This is concentrated. This will last you a really long time. You just need a little bit of it and then you uh, add water. And of course you can change the intensity of the color by how much of the concentrated watercolor you add to your water. But then what's great about these is that you can screw them screw them shut, they won't leak, they won't tip over because they're also in here and then you can save them for the next time you do a watercolor activity. And here are the watercolor or the paint brushes that we use. These ones are from Waldorf Supplies. We've had this set for some time. These ones here are from a local craft store. They, they still work really well, but in the younger years, you wanna make sure that your brushes are nice and big, really full because the watercolor projects that you're going to be doing, they're not going to be detailed at all. They're mostly very, uh, almost like blurry if you, if you look at the final watercolor. And so you want to use really uh, large paintbrushes. You also want to teach your child how to use them correctly. I know when my kids were young, especially the boys, they would press too hard to the point where they would leave ridges in their paper because it would hit the this part of the 
paintbrush. So you do want to teach them how to use the paintbrushes before you do your watercoloring. And we like to use a heavy watercolor paper. You want to use something that's about 22 inches by 17 inches. Thick watercolor is great. I've got watercolor paper right here on my desk to show you. This one is not as thick as the ones that we would typically use, but it's nice and large, and this is really great. You could cut this down and have two pieces, but this is, this is a really great large piece for young kids to work on to begin with. So for the very first lessons that the child will do, in, in first grade especially, is the mixing of just two primary colors. So the very first lesson is just yellow or just blue. And this, this, these two first watercolors go great with uh, a story about the sky or a story about the sun. And then maybe as the sun sets and you add a little bit of the red, you get like a beautiful sunset. And then if you did with the blue, you could add the red and it could be like, you know, another like late twilight sky. So there's a lot of stories that you can do with this. There are other techniques that you can do with the watercolors, like adding a little bit of salt or adding a, a little bit of water, like just sprinkling water once it mostly dries. What's really great about these watercolors is that they can be reactivated after the drawing is done. So even if it's completely dry, you can add more water to it and you can get those colors to mix again. And I have a, I have a video on different watercoloring techniques and you can check that out too if you need some more, uh, some more tips and examples. All right, so again, the, the watercolors and even the drawings, they're not gonna be very specific. They're gonna be very broad and you can see there's not a, there's not a lot of detail there. There is, you know, this would be maybe for first grade or second grade, but you're not going to get something that's as detailed as when you're using color pencils. And this does go into, does it go into color pencils? No. All right, so this book also goes into the different, some different tips on how to draw. I don't know how to draw, so this was really helpful for me, especially when I was doing my chalk drawings on the chalkboard for the kids to follow. And this goes over the different basic shapes for um, pretty much everything that you're going to draw. Uh, something else that will come in handy for first grade are some chalk pastels. And this would be great if you're using a chalkboard. These are especially vibrant. They're really beautiful. We've used them a lot, but you can still see they come in a really wide, beautiful range of colors and they're very vibrant. We, we like them a lot. Okay, the next book is from imagination to form the letters A to Z. You want to do this one after you do the form drawing uh, main, main lesson block. And this one goes through all the different letters of the alphabet. It includes a story and a poem. And this is a great way to introduce each of the letters. It's a really beautiful artistic expression. Okay, so to accompany this curriculum, we also picked up this book called LMNOP and all the letters A to Z. The poems are by Howard Schrager and the illustrations are by Bruce Bishop and he's the one that writes all the curriculum for live education. So the illustrations are going to be really similar. They're going to be exactly the same actually, but the poems are a great addition to the curriculum. So this is going to be a, a great thing that you can uh, you can say every day that you're doing a letter. You can do one letter a day or you could do one letter a week. You could do, say, the story on one day and the letter on the next day and the poem every day. Or, or, or you, can, you can choose it however you'd like. Now, some of these drawings were a little bit difficult for, for us to do with this much detail. So we simplified these quite a bit. And the way we did ours, this is... The letters A to Z. I think this is my first son, or maybe my second now, I can't remember. So you have the letter, the, the uppercase and lowercase. I don't think you actually introduced the lowercase right away, but we did both of them at the same time. And then here's our letter A. It's just a bright shining sun producing the A on the land. And then I think for B, Let's go to C, actually, because C is a cave, and that one more closely represents the one that was in the book, because we did take some liberties with how we did ours, but you can see that he did a pretty fair job doing the mountains here, and then the different kind of hills and rocks around, and then here's the C for 
the cave and then you can see how we get the the letter C from that. Now all of these, when, when we first started homeschooling, I didn't have a chalkboard, so I did this drawing in a separate book and then my son copied the drawing and then later when we got a chalkboard, I started to do these chalk drawings and then whoever my student was at the time could then copy that from the chalkboard. Also, the, it comes where you can purchase separately the LMNOP letters A to Z laminated uh, illustrations with the poems on the back. And this is a beautiful addition to any classroom. It will be really nice decorations or just for a child to have in front of him while he's drawing his own drawing into his main lesson book. So this is really beautiful. Okay, the last book is From Moving and Speaking to Writing and Reading. And what's different about the uh, Waldorf approach to reading and writing is that instead of getting little readers like Bob books, for instance, the child makes his own. And so it starts with all capital letters, simple sentence, based on a story that's been read and a simple illustration. And once the child is done with his book, he's got something that he can read. Now this is the a different main lesson book, but I just wanna show you that it would be maybe not quite this large, but it would be something similar to this where he's written the, actually this is probably a good size considering how long the sentence is. So this is probably a good size, 22 by 17 inches. So you, you're writing the, sentence and then you have a drawing and then you're reading that and that is actually your first reader and then later on in the last then it goes into some of the other things that you would typically find in a first grade curriculum and that's the short vowel sounds and the long vowel sounds it doesn't go through too many different rules they they're really simple in the beginning okay so all right, so the last thing I wanna show you are some of the different supplies that you'll use for first grade. And one of the activities that you're going to be doing is knitting. And this is the thick or the bulky uh, weight of yarn, and this is the worsted, so this is a little bit thinner. You just wanna make sure that you're getting the correct needles depending on the thickness of your yarn. And one of the first activities is actually making like a little animal and or a ball. And this one is really easy to make. It's done with four different colors. And once you're done, you fill it with wool and then the teacher can help tie it off. And then you have a little play thing. And it's so great to see the kids accomplish something within just a short period of time from learning how to knit to making something. And this is really thrilling for them. Of course, this is great for my boys because, you know, anything that can be thrown is something exciting. All right. Something else that you could do in the younger years is the drop spindle. And so you can get the wool and then you can turn it into yarn, then you can knit that. And so this is a drop spindle that we picked up from A Child's Dream. And we also got the book Respect the Spindle. And this goes through some of the different techniques and the physics and the history of the spindle and even has like the wheel as well. And this was, this is a nice addition. This is more as a, a reference material for the teacher to use to learn how to do it so that she can then teach the student. It, especially since a lot of these, these things I didn't know how to do. I didn't know how to knit. I don't know how to use the drop spindle. So this is going to come in really handy. Okay, I want to show you a couple of books that will be really handy for first grade. The first one is called The Living Alphabet, and this is a great addition to first grade because it goes through a beautiful illustrations and where you can kind of see the letters emerge from the illustrations. So this is a great uh, book to have on hand. And there, it, it's not, it's not. Um, really a story or a narrative it's more like how many things can you find that begin with d and the same same with every letter so it's kind of fun for a child to kind of search through and try to to find words or the the different shapes within the illustration the next book is called numerica and this is the waldorf book of counting and again this is a great addition to first grade since the introduction of numbers is taught in first grade and it's also really beautifully illustrated and it has a lovely story. I just want to show you two more books that you can use. Now typically 
we, there's not a lot of reading aloud in a Waldorf curriculum. There's more storytelling. And you can check the description box below for some of my favorite storytelling books that can help you along that journey if, if storytelling is not something that comes easily to you. And But it doesn't mean you can't have a few books on hand. And these are some really beautiful books that we enjoyed and that my kids really like. And I especially like this one because the illustrations are just beautiful. And this is a longer picture book, so this will take you a little while to read. So it could be, you know, over the course of a week or maybe one section every evening before the child goes to sleep. And then this one, Woody, Hazel, and Little Pip, is another really delightful story. It's a really beautiful story and it has really nice illustrations and my daughter really likes this book a lot. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you uh, is the wax. Now, this is something that's really great for the younger years. And I wanna show you two different kinds of wax. This one is the really thin kind. It's almost transparent. And this one is really great for, not just for, for using to, to mold things with, but it's also great for covering little wooden eggs with different designs and uh, decorations. But we recently used the this very thin wax to demonstrate um, fold mountains for our geology unit and how mountains are formed with the different layers and when they get squeezed together when the plates come together or when they just get when there's volcanic activity underneath and the magma pushes up parts of the land so this was kind of cool and because each of these sheets comes with a little bit of tissue paper in the middle we were able to just do that demonstration and then preserve all the sheets of wax now this is a great activity for kids in the winter time especially when they've got something in their hands and you're reading a story but what we found was that it's actually easier to mold the wax in the summer when it's warmer and the the kids hands are warmer and, and it's just a little bit easier to use now sometimes we'll light a candle actually very often we'll have a candle going my kids try to warm the wax over the candle and that's not a good idea but anyway here are some of the other uh, the, the other set of wax that you can get this is the thicker kind and by the way it smells amazing the smell hasn't changed in all these years it's just the natural beeswax smell mm. and it just takes me back to my childhood when I went to a Waldorf school in France so this is something else that you could use in order to mold this little figures and other things for pretend play or to represent something that the child had learned or maybe you could form the different letters or numbers or maybe even make little manipulatives and have like three of something three little round balls from the wax when you're doing your math um, math main lesson Okay, so I think that covers the majority of the supplies that you'll need for first grade. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.